Wind energy is making coal power, gas, and nuclear obsolete. One of the things people don't realize is that how long it takes to actually build something is incredibly important to the ROI of that project. People don't consider this. When they consider looking at a nuclear power plant, they just look at the raw numbers, which often change, by the way. They often change drastically when power plants say, oh, no, we need more money, and it takes them 10 to 20 years to be built. Wind farms can be deployed incredibly quickly at lightning speed. And now wind turbines have become so efficient, they're literally making nuclear obsolete. But fortunately, wind works perfectly in combination with solar. This is Australia's biggest wind farm. It's about to double in size, making it one of the biggest projects in the world. In Australia, commercial deployment of solar energy has risen by a factor of, as in there's 18 times more solar energy commercially deployed within the last four years. But this is not just happening in the solar industry. It's also happening to wind. Australia's biggest wind project will double in size to create a two gigawatt precinct, one of the biggest in the world. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the Renewable Energy... Hang on a minute. No, 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 no. Welcome to the Electric Viking. Yes, it's all part of the picture, isn't it? Part of the puzzle. Renewable energy, electric cars. It's genius, right? It is. It's truly genius. Anyhow, welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers, and welcome back, everyone else. Thank you for tuning in. Please, would love to meet you in person. Come to the Fully Charged Show here in Sydney. Well, not here in Sydney, but here in Australia, in Sydney, I'm in Melbourne, but I'm going to fly to Sydney to see you to present at their live show in March of next year. Plus, I'll be in London the following month and San Diego and maybe Canada as well. Not sure. Let me know. Would you come to the Canada show? Let me know. And if you will, I'll consider it. Australia's sunshine state, meaning Queensland, is rapidly making a name for itself in wind power, unveiling plans for what the state government claims will be one of the largest onshore wind projects in the world, with a new one gigawatt project to be developed by Akiona. The 2 billion 180 turbine Harry's Range Wind Farm will be built within the McIntyre Wind Precinct in the Southern Queensland Renewable Energy Zone. The precinct's total generation capacity will be more than 2,000 megawatts or 2 gigawatts, which is a ludicrous amount of energy. Renewaleconomy.com.au says that Harry's Range will be built alongside the 923 megawatt McIntyre Wind Farm and the government-owned energy company Clean Co's proposed 100 megawatt Carrara wind farm, which is being built at the same location. Basically, people are just, this is like a gold rush. It's a renewable energy gold rush. That's what we're in right now. People cannot deploy renewable energy fast enough. I'm talking about not just individuals and governments. I'm talking about commercial companies where they're saying, you know what? This is where the money is. This is how we can make money. The McIntyre Wind Farm, already under construction, is 70% owned by Akiona, with a 30% stake by Korea Zinc subsidiary Arc Energy. Clean Co's Carrara Wind Farm is state government owned. This new investment takes the total investment in wind generation in Queensland to $4 billion. And, you know, the great thing is here is it's not like investing in a coal power plant or a gas power plant where you think, well, you know, it might make some good profits for a little while, but when's that going to end? could end at any time, right? And the thing is, with coal and gas power plants, you need them to be at near peak capacity to actually make a significant profit. The reality is, like Tony Sieber says on Rethink X on his YouTube channel, it's very common that power plants don't run. In fact, it's very common they run at less than 70% efficiency, meaning they often actually make a loss. People don't talk about this, but it's actually true. We are massively changing from a coal-fired power state to a renewable energy future, and Queenslanders back that, said Queensland Premier Anastasia Palasuk on Monday at a press conference. Ever since we released our Queensland Energy and Jobs Plan, we are seeing massive investment. This deal demonstrates that our bold vision to deliver an energy system that is made up of 70% renewable energy by 2032 has boosted investor interest, Palasuk said. But the thing is, actually, to be fair here, Queensland is way behind everyone else. That's the truth. They're saying they're going to hit 70% by 2032. The rest of Australia is saying as a, Australia as a whole will hit 92% by 2030. So clearly Queensland's plans for renewable energy are way behind the rest of the country. Now, there's some states here in Australia that are already basically running on 100% renewable energy. Perth is getting close to 70%. Canberra or the Australian Capital Territory, they're about 100% renewable energy. And their energy bills, guess what? They're the only place in, well, in fact, they're one of very few places in the world where energy costs haven't risen over the last few years. 
Clearly, renewable energy helps to keep the costs down. An extra 180 wind turbines are going out into the Western Downs, which makes this one of the largest wind farm precincts in the Southern Hemisphere, the Premier said. And of course, it means jobs for Queenslanders. So the question is, why would they install massive wind farms, some of the biggest in the world, in one of the sunniest places in the world? It is one of the sunniest places in the world. That's why it's called the Sunshine State. Well, the sun doesn't shine at night. It does, but you know, where you're located, it doesn't shine. So it makes sense for these wind farms to generate wind at night. Now, actually, it's windier at night than it is during the day. A lot of people are not aware of that. So it makes logical sense to have all this wind generation. But what else we need? The other thing we need is battery storage. And Queensland is going to deploy a lot of battery storage to harness a lot of this power to be able to use it when there's not a lot of wind and there's no sun. With the addition of Harry's Range. The McIntyre Wind Pro Precinct will be the biggest power station in Queensland, eclipsing the state's largest coal-fired power station, which has a nameplate capacity of 1,400 megawatts. At 360 turbines in total, it'll be the biggest wind farm in the country by a huge distance, said Queensland Treasurer Cameron Dick on Monday. In fact, it's four times bigger than the next largest wind farm in Australia, and it will generate four times as much power as the next largest wind farm in the country. Meaning is for, this is one of the biggest wind farms ever thought up or imagined in world history. And it shows that we can build renewables at massive scale, 2000 megawatts in a single location. He went on to say that he doesn't agree with nuclear. And I agree with him. Nuclear used to make sense. It did used to make sense. It doesn't anymore. It's simply way too expensive. You know, people have been talking about nuclear in recent times. I can build you five times the amount of nuclear for the same price in about 20% of the time. The point he's making here is nuclear power plants take a long, long time to build. So essentially, you could build five times as many wind farms as say one nuclear power plant in 20% of the time. And the reason for that is that it takes an incredible amount of infrastructure and money to build a nuclear power plant. It really doesn't make any cost sense at all. Queensland's Deputy Premier Stephen Miles says the 180 turbine Harry's Range project will support 600 jobs during construction. The first two wind farms within the McIntyre Wind Precinct were already expected to support 400 construction jobs. Right now, around 22% of Queensland's energy is derived from solar. And that figure will continue to increase consistently. But what did surprise me was how quickly wind is being deployed in this state. And it shows you one thing, wind energy deployment and wind energy costs are continuing to decrease. One of the amazing things that's going on right now is wind turbines are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and therefore they're actually becoming much more cost effective. Generally, the bigger they get, the more efficient they are, and the more likely they are to make things like coal and gas power stations completely obsolete. Thank you for watching, my friends. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Bye-bye.